have been flowing in that direction to make sure that I emphasize the word wisdom. When you see verily, verily in the Bible, God does not repeat himself. He only emphasizes his point. And the Bible says out of two or three witnesses, the truth will be established. So in the establishment of the truth is what has been stirring my heart in this direction of wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. If, if you listen to Moment to Ponder, I've been shouting wisdom. Because I understand that there is no satanic problem anywhere. There is no attack anywhere. The problem that people have is wisdom problem. Wisdom is the problem. When you understand the dynamics of wisdom, you will live battle-free life. I will show you scriptures. Battle-free life. Because wisdom tells you what to do and what not to do. Wisdom tells you how to act and not to act. Wisdom tells you how to react and not to react. A lot of things would have turned to young people, scatter, scatter. If you don't see wisdom. But when you see wisdom in display, everything comes down. Am I still communicating? Look at the book of Proverbs chapter 8. I wish I could have it on the screen. From verse 1. I will read it. I'm reading New Living Translation. From verse 1. Don't worry, I'll read. Listen as wisdom calls out. Hear as understanding raises her voice. I don't know why they use she for wisdom. I know it, but I'm not breaking it down today. But anything that is feminine has the power to reproduce. Is a law of multiplication. On the hilltop along the road, she takes a stand at the crossroad. Who is taking a stand at the crossroad? Please respond to me, please. By the gate and the entrance of the town, on the road leading me, she cries out loud. I call you. I call to you. To all of you. How many of us? What am I cry, crying? What am I saying? Cry to all of us. Thank you. Okay, that's NIV. Okay, anyone. It's fine, but I'm reading New Living Translation. You simple people. Use good judgment. You foolish people, show some understanding. Listen to me. I have an important thing to tell you. Everything I say is right. What? What? what are, you, are you listening to me? Everything wisdom says is what? Right. Are you still here? For I speak the truth. I detest every kind of deception. My advice is wholesome. There is nothing devious or crooked in it. My words are plain to anyone with understanding, clear to those with knowledge. I'll read verse, I'll read verse 9 again. My words are plain to anyone with understanding, clear to those with knowledge. Choose my instruction than silver, <laughs> and knowledge than pure gold. What are you to choose? Wisdom's advice than what? Than gold. Some people are looking for money. I will show you some things this morning. You are looking for silver and gold. You don't need it. All you need is wisdom. I will show you scriptures. For wisdom is far more valuable than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with it. I, wisdom, live together with good judgment. I know where to discover knowledge and discernment. All who fears the Lord will hate evil. Therefore, I hate pride and arrogance, corruption and perverse speech. Common sense and success belongs to me. Who? Egbono, what else do you need? Insight and strength are mine. Because of me, wisdom, kings reign. And rulers make just decrees. Hi, Alabosh. Rulers lead with my help. And nobles make righteous judgments. I love all who loves me. 
Those who search will surely find me. Is somebody's heart getting my scriptures this morning? Those who search will surely find me. Hey, may God help you to set your priorities right. I have riches and honor, as well as enduring wealth and justice. My gifts, the gifts of wisdom, are better than gold, even the purest gold. My wages better than sterling silver. Mm, okay. I work in righteousness, in part of justice. Those who love me inherit wealth. I will fill their treasuries. Chai. I wish you get what I, why I said chai. The Bible told us about a boy that came out of an adulterous act. And let me say this to you in digression. There is nothing that happens to you if you carry the covenant that is a coincidence. You are just living a script. Oh, we life. We are living we life. If you understand the dynamics of God, you will know that as a child of the living God, you are living a script. May you live your script well. Halabos. Your amen is weak. I said, may you live your scripted life well. Even Jesus said, I have come in the volume of books that is written of me. So we are all living scripts. Good, bad, ugly, whatever is a script you are reading. You are living. And if you are not careful, you don't understand that you are living a script. You might be confused. There are people that have read their lives in the scriptures and I said, this can, this can only be a paradox. What, what is this? Let me digress. Ruth, a Moabite. God said the Ammonites and the Moabites must not appear before him for 10 generations. After some time, God got angry and said forever. They should appear. They should not show up. And Elimelech left the house of bread. Bethlehem means the house of bread. Took his wife and his two boys. And when he was mistakenly naming those children, he named them sickly and wasting away. And he got to the land of Moab. The man died. When the man died, he gave the children platform to marry from the land of Moab. Because if he was alive, he's not in the covenant to do that. I see Jehovah giving way for the things that has no way. You are not getting my heart. The Bible says, as soon as that happened, simple. Malon died. Kilion died. The mother-in-law said, I'm going back. I've come plenty, I'm going empty. Don't call me sweet, call me bitter. First Ruth chapter 1. And on her way, she told her daughter, Zinlo, that married the two boys. Say, hey, girls, hey, father, there's no future for you. <laughs> and God was looking for the genealogy of Jesus in that lineage. God, that's why if you don't know how to fear God, you're your own. Eru re umba mi, eru re umba mi, o bato fi di a yesole. One thing I would do till I die is to reverence Baba. I fear him as if I'm afraid of, I'm afraid of rat actually. When I see rat, I jump. I don't like reptiles, I don't like. I fear God. Not because he will put a club on my head and beat me. No. No. I fear him in, in, in love. I fear him to reciprocate his goodness to me. I fear him to say thank you. How can you be so good to someone and he's just treating you anyhow? You don't like it in the natural. Am I being honest? Is somebody getting me? And God has feelings. And that was how Ruth followed. And God gave her a place in the genealogy of Jesus. That's scary. Coming back to this person. A whole king refused to go to the battlefront. And he saw a woman bathing. And he called her and said, come. And the woman came. 
I just want mating. <laughs> she got pregnant. God knows how to expose sin. And that was what happened. Unfortunately, David was a man after God's heart. He has the key of God in his hands. And God was so angry. He said, why did you do this? It's not because of me. I use because people will talk nonsense. If you have asked me, I would have given you such and so. And you know how David packaged the sin? He said, don't worry, go and go to your... I will, say, I will call your husband to come home. <laughs> and the boy, the man came home. And the kid said, go home and rest and take care of your wife. He said, no, I can't do that. I can't preach that today. That's for another day. And finally... David said, the only thing is to cover this thing. Listen, nothing is covered. Oh. Can you hide behind a finger? There is nothing covered. Oh, the Bible says there is nothing that is covered that will not be revealed. So if you are struggling, you are living in struggle, you better cry out. Because it will still show up. Hello? And the Bible says, the woman got pregnant. Bathsheba got pregnant. And when she got pregnant... Of course, the king has killed the husband. And what are we going to do? And David went back to God. Me, I like David, Sha. She have told you the story of a boy that was, that was killing the grandma's uh, birds. That the sister was manipulating to, to do house chores. You remember I've told you, have I taught you there? Yeah. Uh, and finally... The woman, the boss said, well, you can't kill me. Let me go back to daddy. He's my mommy. He's my grandma. Grandma, I've been killing your boss. Grandma said, I've seen it before. I'm just waiting for you to come. That's freedom. David went back to God and said, God, what is going on? Please, this boy, this baby must not die. God said, ah, this one. Whatever you do, I've made up my mind. And the boy died. And I love the way David reacted. He said, honey, wah, 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 wah. One vision is dead, another one is coming. Some of you, you are living in your past. You better move forward. When somebody is dead, kill it and let it go. Is somebody getting me? Don't still make it alive. That past relationship, he has gone. Some of you, you are married. Sorry. The person that proposed to you, that wanted to marry you, has been married. Started having children. And you are still saying he's coming back. Are you a wizard or a witch? He's gone. You wake up. Your husband is dead. You are saying, don't worry, he's coming back. He has died. Wake up. Move on. You can't be driving forward and be looking at the rear. You will have an accident. Face front. Move on. Life is too short, short to be going around in circle. Move. Why? I've seen a lot of people there on the spot because they can't just move on. He raped me so. Are you the first person that will rape? They will rape. Because you don't do party for those that are suffering. You don't even know you don't have a problem. When people tell you their stories, you will be crying. Say, show Tony. When I do recovery classes for men that struggle with their addictions, and they come to class, and they see each other in my recovery class. Hey, hey, so, you know, I mean, Koko. Ah, okay. What about good afternoon? The good afternoon is always low. Afternoon, sir. Afternoon. <laughs> but we are the same. We are struggling. So there's no point. Move on. David. So David looked at Bathsheba and said, "Well, one vision is dead. There's another vision on the inside of you. Come on, give back to the next vision." Some of you, when a man tells you he's no more interested in you, let him go. Do a party. Good readers to bad nonsense party. I will come and preach there for you. I'll come and help you to preach. Let him go. Because when one door closes, another one must open. Nature hates emptiness. Am I still communicating? So before he knew it, he told his wife, let's do another one. And lo and behold, they gave back to another one. Ha! Allah he. Allah ruti aole mudani. Mokbe hagao. You can't hold him to ransom. He can do what he likes by himself. He's all God by himself. And this woman got pregnant. And he gave back to Solomon. And the Bible says, 
God was nurturing that boy. Now listen, David has so many children. No. Have you thought of mercy before? Have you thought of grace before? Ne? Is it... Wait. Is it Solomon that should succeed David? Talk to me. Is it Solomon? And in 1 Kings chapter 1, he began to give him the lowdown of how is, what is going to happen. Handed over the kingdom to him. Told him who to kill and who to who not to kill. You see, you don't, you don't mess with a warrior. I will not say it more. I will leave that. Don't mess with a fighter. If you mess with a fighter, you will suffer it. Shimei insulted David on his way in struggle. Talk down on him. Said a lot of things. One of his men wanted to kiss. Hey, Mark Powell, don't kill him. Don't kill him. Maybe because of him, God will show me mercy. Let him be abusing me. But when David was living, in first Kings chapter 1, he told his son Solomon, he said, that man, kill him. Don't let him live. I, I preserved him for you. I'm hiding my hands. Oh, Malabo, shut up. Most of you live my worries. It's not for everybody. And listen to me carefully. The Bible says, Oh God, how do I preach this? There's something I want to say. I'm not in a hurry. Don't worry. Do you know? Read the scriptures very well. But Sheba, there was nowhere in the Bible that David opened his mouth and said, Solomon will be the king. No. But <laughs> Bathsheba had a relationship with the prophet. When you have a relationship with the prophet, you are privy to the secret of God. I'm sure what happened that day was, I don't know what Bathsheba did though. I don't know how he was close to Abiata the prophet though. But I'm sure he will always honor and worship the prophet. And you know, bless the prophet. And they were having a meeting one day. And David said, ah, prophet, hmm. I'm worried about all my boys, though. They are not useful. Is it Adonijah? Is it, is it uh, which one raped Tamar now? What's her name? Amnon. All these children. Honestly, my heart of heart, I just wish he's Solomon. Hey. And the moment <laughs> Bathsheba heard, he's dropped. He just packaged herself and sent to the king, honey. Now, he went back to the prophet. He didn't go to the king first. He went to the prophet and said, prophet, can you tell story about Lashima planning? Calm down. Don't worry, we'll plan it. And you know what she did? When she told the, the prophet, the prophet said, don't worry. You'll be going to the king and discuss this issue of who is taking over the throne with the king. As soon as you are talking like this, it's in your Bible. Stop looking at me as if the Bible is not with you. You have your Bible. Read. The Bible says, as soon as they were, they raised that conversation, the prophet came in and sealed it. That was how Solomon became the king. Wisdom. Do you know that it would have been easy for Bathsheba to be acting up? Act up in destiny. You can't act up in destiny. If you act anyhow in destiny, you are doomed. There was no reaction. There was no acting up. Natural. But she knows her God. The Bible said those who know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. That's where I'm going. And the Bible says, David told him, take over, take charge. Kill the killables. Some people should leave. Some people should not die. The one that a curse has been flowing over his head. One of <laughs> one of uh, Eli's sons is he Abiata? Is he Abiata? What I can't remember his name. He said this one. We have put him in the priesthood office by mistake. Remove him. Whatever is flowing over your head, that will be too much your supernatural release and breakthrough. That the curse will now speak by the provocation of things. Heaven will silence it by the blood of Jesus. I said, heaven is silated by the blood of Jesus. Heaven is silated by the blood of Jesus. David could have overlooked it. But a word has come. Every word that has been spoken over your life that is cunningly crafty, affecting your destiny by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says he gave all those judgments and something happened. 
he became a king. And he asked the Lord. Let me, let's see. It's in the book of 2 King, 1 Kings chapter 3. Please get it for me. It's here. I found it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to start to, I'll read from verse, verse 3. And Solomon loves the Lord. 1 Kings chapter 3, chapter 1, let me sorry. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. May you understand high places in life. I said you will go higher. And, and the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For, th for that was the great high place. And what did he do? When we are talking about offering, you think prophet or God, God, uh, God is hungry. No. It's for your own good. You only left your hand. You didn't live your life. That was the great high place. A thousand burnt offering. Did Solomon offer on, on, upon the altar? Please, let's wait and think. Pause and think. One thousand goats. Fix picture one thousand goats. Don't bother about oxen. We are not used to oxen here. Or one thousand cows. My prayer for you today is anything that God will not take from you with joy, may God not give you. Yeah. If you don't like, don't bother. Don't say amen. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> because I live there. That's where I live. Anything that Jehovah will not take, will not be able to take back from you, may Jehovah not give it to you. Yeah. You know why you must say amen? It will kill you. So what's the essence of life when you can't you, can, you are not even there to spend whatever he's giving you. May God give you grace Amen. to carelessly, recklessly love him. Amen. Against all oppositions. Amen. If they lie, let them say over the time, is the one is the one feeding God. Can you feed God? Answer me. Is the one clothing God? Can you clothe God? Is the one blessing God? Is the one lifting church? We're doing everything for church. Can, can you do anything for church? You that can, anybody, I, God forbid, well, I can't say God forbid, heaven is real. Do you know that I can just be talking like this and go? And life continues. Somebody will just take microphone as she was saying. So what is life? Ordinary vapor. You are now holding that life on your throat as if you are, you better drop it and live. And let your life honor God. It's possible now. Somebody, as soon as because they want to moderate the crowd and they scatter and they say, Come, come down. As she was talking. And they will carry and go. That's the end. Life is too short. Don't live as if you. How many years do you want to live on that? You're wearing an iron dress. What's your problem? Be coming down. Live your life as a legacy. That people will say, Ha! Any law. Not that good readers to bad nonsense. I'll continue. In Gibeon, the, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God asked, ask me, what shall I give thee? She, wait, wait, you don't understand the dynamics of this. There is no, God needs blood in heaven. When they down and leave sin, they needed the shedding of blood to cover up. God, the only thing God eats is blood. That's why in the Old Testament, sacrifice is important. But the sacrifice we are sacrificing now, we are sacrificing in love. Not under compulsion. So when God woke up in heaven and he saw 1,000, blood was everywhere. Blood, 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 blood. Ah! Who is this person? Who is this person? Who is this person? Tani. You now discover that David had taught, taught Solomon that everything about God is everything about God. No withholding, no withdrawal. All for God. Hallelujah. All for God. He said, come. Boy, oh boy, come. What do you want? And God said to him, and God asked him, what does he want? And Solomon said, thou hast showed unto your servant David, my father, great mercy. According as he was before thee in truth, Look at the person talking in truth. Hey, Some of you are judging somebody. You don't know what God is saying. 
You just look at yourself and you conclude about that person. Allah come and you must say, Pay all day. I'm content to move ten if you will me, oh, more. Oh, more content if you to feel to feel damn in all. You are going to rejoice. That's why it's stop rejoicing. Be reasonable. And Solomon said, That has shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy. According as he has worked before thee, <laughs> this was a product of war, though. Continue. And uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept him. Thou hast kept for him his great kindness. That thou hast given him a son to sit upon his throne as it is this day. Hey! And now, O oh Lord my God, that thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. I'm a, but a little child. I know not how to go out and come in. And the servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered but not counted for multitude. The, the, Don't forget Proverbs 8 that I read. When wisdom said, in me you have wealth, you have riches, you have everything. If you have me, you remember I said it in Proverbs 8. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart chai, to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Let me read New Living Translation, verse 9. Give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well. Wisdom is also an understanding heart. Are you getting me? <laughs> know the difference between right and wrong for by himself is able to govern these great people of yours huh. and the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had not asked these things and God said unto him because thou hast asked this thing thou hast not asked for thyself long life wisdom gives you what? If you have wisdom, you have understanding heart, while live long, God, you want long life, have wisdom, have understanding. Proverbs are told us. And has not asked for thyself long life, neither has asked for riches for thyself. You know people are majoring on the minor causes of life now. It's not money you need. If you keep loving money, you can be mourning. All you need is wisdom from God. He will give you wealth. Thyself has not asked the life of thy enemy, shall you? You didn't even ask for the enemy. You know, Proverbs said the enemy is small. So it's not juju, it's not ogun. Let them be flying in the afternoon and be in the day. If you have God's wisdom, they can't touch you. You become untouchable. I've seen a lot of people that have operated so much in folly. And they have died. And they died for themselves. Shall I stop me? Have you gone to bury somebody at the mortuary before? On your way, you see some people naming babies. Some people are doing wedding. I, <laughs> life goes on. Every form of foolishness in your life, in words, in actions, in deed, may Jehovah have mercy on you. You didn't ask for yourself. Ask the life of thy enemies. Thou hast not asked for thyself. Under, thou hast asked for thyself or self-understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to your words. I have given thee a wise and understanding heart so that there be known halabosha, that be able to stand before you. <laughs> Neither after thee shall any rise unto thee. The order of Solomon is Jesus Christ now. Nothing more. Look at what he did. Look at where he was coming from. Ah! Oh God. Now, here at that, verse 13. And I have also given thee that which thou hast didn't ask. Both riches, honor, so that there shall be none, there shall be not be any amongst the kings like unto thee all thy days. Let me read another, this version. New Living. And if you follow me, I'm reading verse 14. And if you follow me and obey my decrees and my commands, and as your father David did, I will give you a long life. 
Then Solomon woke up. May you wake up after today's service and realize that God has covenanted with you. Realize that it has been a dream. And he returned to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the Lord. Covenant. Where is sacrifice, burnt offering, and peace offering? Then he invited all the officials to a great banquet. Let's see verse 16. That's where I'll close in five minutes. Soon later, two prostitutes came to king to ask an argument. You see, when you carry wisdom in the spirit, it must show in your lifestyle. It's not just, uh, wisdom is not hidden. By the time you are working in wisdom, everything around you speaks wisdom. You talk wisdom, you act wisdom, you relate wisdom. It shows. The, immediately this man had an encounter with God and God gave wisdom, manifestation must follow. I pray today in the Abrahamic covenant, in this covenant, I'm, the Davidic covenant that I'm talking about, God, will, it will be obvious that you have carried wisdom. In your daily life and activities, it will be obvious. You will not work in folly anymore. Ah, your amen is weak. I said you will not work in folly. There came two women that were harlots. Prostitute came to the king to have an argument settled. Please, my lord, one of them begged this woman, as I live in the same house, I gave her to a baby where she was with me in the house. Three days later, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There were only two of us in the house. But the baby died during the night. She rolled over it. I'm not preaching that today. If I preach it, we won't live here. Some people, you are not supposed to have a child. Children miss road. Where you have, where you have children, you fight for their destiny till they become something. You touch your breast, you touch your womb, you make declarations in pain, in tears. Oluwa, I cannot labor in vain, physically and spiritually. Bring my children to destiny. It's not that you'll be looking for stupid things all over the place. Every weekend you are going to parties. Your children are decaying, their life is messed up. All you are looking for is what? Excuse me, what? Make it A. I was teaching them at the school of finishing touches. I said it to get to a stage. Maybe I'll be 90 something. I say, eh, eh, you and your image, you preach it. I'm shaking. It's not, the, it's not my fault. It's age. I can't be like this for life. No matter the exercises, no matter the diet, we will fray. Eh, 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 eh. By the time they are bringing me in, Prophet would I have one billion congregation that time. Some three ushers would say, Grandma, come, come. Come, come and... Come and just before I go to sit down. And Prophet will look at me and say, That's my mom. She fought for my life. It's not now. When you are old, you can't do anything again. You will see all this nonsense you are doing. Think about your life. Are you still getting what I'm talking about? My mother told me I can't bury her. I buried her. Every devil in hell knew I buried her. You don't give up on any child. I just, I'm not preaching to some people. It's just few people. 